Hello everybody. Today we are installing Dataflow Probe in authentication mode, in basic authentication mode to be precise. Why do we need it? Well, as we move to cloud more and more, uh, nowadays uh, you want to be more and more secure. And also uh, you want to be uh, really adhering to the best of security settings. And it seems that everything is moving to that direction more passwords, more certificates, more everything. So basically from now on, I would consider it to be the standard method, although it is not out of the box for everything, but still. Okay, so uh, while my DFP that I created in AWS is provisioning, we need to prepare the OpsBridge suite itself to accommodate for this, right? So the first thing to do is to go to the OBM. This is the containerized OBM and download the local client. And luckily, I already did that. So I'm going to be connecting to my environment from my own computer over here. And uh, once again, let me open the client really, really fast. I'll bring it up. OK, as you see, it really likes uh, opening all kinds of dialogues, but uh, it shouldn't take too long, although I am pretty far Right, so let me let me go and um, yes, modify the one that I have right now. Uh, it's called January. January. Right, so I set up this environment, and later it will be connecting to SAS. And now I'm going to try and connect to it. That's going to be step number one. There's actually going to be quite a few interesting steps in this one. One of them is going to be through the UCMDB client. Another one is going to be through JMX, right? So we will log in with our credentials over here and uh, just let it run. Now, uh, in the meanwhile, while it opens, it will take it a few seconds to open. We will go back to our operations bridge suite. And we need to actually copy the URL and get to the CMS console. That's right, CMS like this. You might remember it from the past. It was port 8443 in the classic installations in containers. You need to put the uh, slash CMS, and then you need to go to the JMX console. Now, if I remember correctly, I do need Yes, I do need to have the UCMDB client that is loading over here. So let's give it a second to load. Okay, there we are. So we'll go to security, users and groups, and we will reset the passwords for admin. Uh, I just found that after the installation, the admin itself might work properly, but when you try to use it in integrations, it just might not react properly. So I'll just go ahead and reset the password. Oh, come on, not like this. Right, so old password, and I'm going to set it to be exactly the same password as it was before. It is allowed. And now I'll do the same for sysadmin. Now, sysadmin password, usually when you install your suite, it would be the same as admin, or you might predetermine it uh, in secrets file or something like that. But when you do it, the install using all defaults, this password is uh, something else, right? You need to actually reset it to use it. If you remember in the past, old password is incorrect. Just give me one second. And now attempt number two. And it says that the old password is incorrect. Let's try it one more time. And it doesn't really like the old password. We'll have to fix it. So I'll use this icon instead to just set the password instead of reset it, right? Let's do this. All right. So now we can log in to the sysadmin or to the JMX and continue our exercises, right? So we go to sysadmin over here and we use the newly set password. 
and we are in. So now we need to set the basic authentication credentials. When you install the OpsBridge suite, it actually sets it for you for, I think, a randomized value, although I'm not sure, but I don't really want to trust that. I want to be the one in control since I'm going to use uh, the uh, functionality. Then I don't need to trust anything that was auto-generated, right? So we'll go to basic authentication credential. And then for the basic authentication credential, we're going to say new user is going to be basic out. Why do we use the user? By the way, we're not changing the user because it is already used by the internal data flow probe that came with the container as OpsBridge suite. So I cannot really change that. However, when you change a password, all of the DFP instances that are already connected to your OBM would get the new password reset for them as well. Right, so as long as the username is the same, whatever auto-generated passwords or remote data folks that you had so far connected to your environment, they would automatically receive the new password. So there is no um, really um, damage in changing the password from default, although it's already used. Right, so I'm gonna say uh, the password to something simplistic and I'm gonna be pressing the invoke button, one second. And then without exposing the password to the internet, we can see that it was changed. So now it also can be used in installing uh, the uh, data flow probe. The second thing, since I'm going to be connecting this environment to uh, a central one in a different video, of course, I need to make sure that this environment is not going to be used as uh, the main as uh, global ID generator. This is very important because global ID generator can be only one. Otherwise, two global ID generators would be fighting for control and we don't really like that at all, do we? All right, so we'll go to JMX search over here and we're gonna be uh, searching for set as global, oh, oh come on, set as global uh, ID generator. Right, and uh, let me see, uh, set as none actually, uh, set as non-global ID generator, sorry. And I'm gonna say one. Now what's the logic behind uh, setting it to non-local ID generator or global ID generator? Uh, it, it varies between the environments. Some environments would really need to be the central ones. And sometimes you want to decide that whatever environment you're going to be connecting to is going to be the main one. So in my topology, the environment that I installed here, the containerized one, is going to be subordinate to the main environment in some place else. Sometimes you might decide to do it otherwise, but uh, in the cloud, as it is set up right now, and considering that I have multiple students that are going to be using the same place, I want the global ID generation to happen in a place that I control, where students cannot go and control it. It was a, a rare dis decision that I made, and of course, in your environment, you have to do the same thing. However, Regardless of what you decide, it needs to be a conscious choice on your side. So on the environment that should be set as global ID generator, you would set it to be. And on the one that is not, you should set it not to be. Okay, don't leave it in the hands of automatic parameters because uh, you're going to lose this battle pretty fast. Okay, now it's time to install the data flow pro. Okay, and here we're just starting the data flow probe installation. Let's let it run, and the installation is pretty simple. If you ever done it before, not much has changed. Maybe uh, they just add another place to put a password, really. Uh, but uh, that's all we want. So full data flow probe installation, new installation, the default uh, location. Now uh, we're going to say that this is you see, uh, sorry, this is BSM because it, the BSM and OBM are the same thing. Right, so it's gonna be opsb.january dot dot com and the address itself uh, do I need to change it really? I don't think so. Yeah, we just we just keep it as it is. 
And now it will say that it's not able to connect, although it can. That's the point with the basic authentication. Uh, actually, you kind of do it on blind. You, when you don't use basic authentication, if you if you already installed the FP in the past, then you know it just tries to connect to your environment, and then it sees a BSM or a PM or whatever, and it just says, well, everything is good. The, the checks uh, were passed, and it just gets to the next step. Here, it will just fail, and we need to tell it to ignore the result because it's not going to be fixed by uh, changing networking or anything like that. All right, so now it's testing and it's got into the opportunity to fail. Uh, as you see, it, it's not that it's not, it's not able to connect and that's it, right? If it would be a networking issue, it would be just jumping right ahead, but instead, it's from networking perspective, it does see uh, the response, but it does not know what to do what to do with it. it. Doesn't know what to do. So we say customer one, of course, like always, basic authentication, yes. Okay. And now we need to set the username and the password. The password is this, and the username is basic auth. Basic auth is the default one. Okay, data flow probe identifier. I think we can change the identifier, although why, why would I? There's no need to do it. Okay, and now a bunch of passwords on our journey of clicking the next button everywhere. All right, and then another password. I think this is the new one, right? The key store, yes. So every new version of DFP just has another place to put your password because, um, well, I have no idea really. I'm going to put it on low, no secrets here, and install. Now we will skip directly to the end of the installation. And while it installs, we'll just get the certificate going for us. So we'll go to the OpsBridge enablement over here. And we don't need to log in. What we just need to do is to go to certificate not valid. We need to click on uh, the button for details. And then I'll use the opportunity to also update my documentation because uh, Chrome has changed in the past half a year. And now instead of using the direct Windows dialog for exporting certificates, it has its own. So now we need to say, uh, uh, yes, we need to click on, click on details. And then uh, let me just take a screenshot of that real fast. Remember, right, not all of our stuff here is structured. And then click on export. All right, so we'll click on that export and actually it's uh, previously the certificates were being exported uh click one second click on export i have three screens right so don't worry i'm not just talking to myself and we're gonna say obm and the certificate encoding well we can we can, we can do ser or there Right, but we're going to say a basic uh, certificate and we will save it where I think we will save it on disk C. Right, so we will go here to disk C and it's going to be obm.pem. So let me just create a procedure out of it. Don't worry, we're not wasting any time because. Okay, and now it's gonna be this, 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 and this. And we're gonna click save, and now our certificate uh, is exported. Fantastic. All right, the data flow probe has installed, so we will just finalize it. We will not remove the group permissions, and we will click on done. So the um, data flow probe itself is a not uh, is not started. It is installed, right? But uh, what we need to make sure is that uh, we import the certificate 
and we modify the settings before we start it for the first time. It just saves a lot of time, right? So we will go directly to the installation folder under SNDB, data flow probe under configure, and we will modify the data flow probe properties. The default port is going to be 8443, but actually we're going to say 443 because this is the containerized Oldbridge suite. Right, and we will be saving uh, the detail and closing. Okay, uh, the second part would be actually starting the PowerShell. Right, and the command is going to be get to this uh, JRE bin um, file location. So we would be able to run uh, the key tool and the the key tool would actually include a wrong certificate file right it's gonna be saying uh, obm ser but it's actually obm pm there we go so the password is uh, now if 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 you remember we set the password in uh, the setup wizard to be something else but uh, if i remember correctly the first before you started for the first time the password is still on default settings from oracle from java manufacturer which is change it yeah there we go you see it accepted the change it it does not it would not accept the new password but once i start data full probe it would change itself to the new password so that's a little bit of a nuance but most people start their data of data full probe then they stop it to import certificates and everything else we just do it in one sweep so i don't think that this error is very common of you know not using the right password yeah, but it is it, it just is Right, so now we will go and we will start. Now oh, come on, start. Data flow probe. There we go. In the meanwhile, we'll go to downloads. Do we have uh, the local client? No, we need to connect to the local client. I'm going actually to do it from the data flow probe. It makes more sense than trying to overload my computer from health the world away because the servers are in US, I'm in Israel, so uh, the, the UCDB client does not really like connecting that far um, in uh, a geographic location. Normally it's not a problem, but because I'm using minimal setup of, of everything, uh, that's not the case anymore. So let's unzip uh, the... UCMDB client, reconfigure it once more and connect. All right, so we are in, so we'll go to data flow probe management. Let's see, yeah, oh, that, not that one, data flow probe setup, uh, and verify if the probe is connected. So let's see, it tries to load the integration point. I have no idea what it's waiting for every time it goes here, but uh, you know, that's part of the thing. So we'll go to data flow probe setup to see if it is connected. And we should be seeing two data flow probes simultaneously. One that comes with the suite, it is uh, one of the pods that runs on Kubernetes. It's the default one, but I don't like working with it because, well, I did not set it up. It's not external. It does not have the resources that I control. And then generally, while it could uh, theoretically replace the uh, standalone data flow probe that uh, I deployed over here, uh, still, if you go to production, that's not what you use, right? So not a very common scenario, I believe. So now we go to data flow probe setup. And we watch the spinning thing over here, the spinning wheel, because we're, well, why not? Right, and there it is. I forgot we cannot see the second one because we I did not install Optic with this containerized Osbridge. It has only BBD and OBM. So it did not install the internal uh, data flow probe because to, for it, uh, for the container suite, it is mainly used to communicate with the Optic uh, CI exchange uh, with the vertical database. So there we have it. There we have it. It's the one that we installed, and it says connected. And we are ready for the next video where I would be exchanging CIs 
with a, a SaaS uh, instance, right? So to recap what we did here, we converted our newly installed Obsbridge suite into basic authentication mode, uh, and we set it not to be the uh, global ID generator. Because it is a new setup, we had to reset some passwords, and then by installing the Dataflow probe with the basic authentication setting and importing the certificate, we installed the Dataflow probe that communicates securely in the cloud, uh, so it will not be a security jeopardy, basically, for ourselves. And we are ready to work with this data flow probe. It can discover stuff, it can exchange CIs. And the next video would we'll be talking exactly about CI exchange with a main instance. See you in the next one.